A playground project is on hold, red tagged after News 13 asked the state about a big problem with it. Rio Arriba County started out looking to add landscape and fencing, but it decided to expand the project to include a new playground when more money became available. However, the county never made sure the contractor was licensed or qualified to do the extra work. Turns out they're not. News 13 asked the state about the contractor, and a day later, an inspector came out and shut down construction. The state wants to make sure the work already done is safe. The county admits it made a mistake. These are public funds, so we want to make sure that this project is done in accordance with the public laws. Rio Reba has hired someone to make sure that those laws are being followed. It's now brought on a contractor who's qualified to do that work. The state police officer who lost his job after this controversial video is now wearing a badge again. This time he's a deputy. Elias Montoya opened fire on a minivan with kids inside in 2013. It cost him his job. Montoya was recently picked over 15 others, though, to become a Taos County Sheriff's deputy. News 13 asked the new sheriff, Jerry Hogruff, about the decision. He said Montoya was picked because of his experience and deserved a second chance. The minivan driver, Oriana Farrell, is still facing charges for having drugs in that car and fleeing from police on that day. A New Mexico deputy is in some hot water after being accused of threatening a man in a wheelchair. Javis County Deputy Alan Covarrubias spent six hours in jail last week following the incident. According to the deputy, he was doing a routine patrol around his apartment complex when he found a bag of heroin. He says the drug belonged to this man, Cody Manns. The deputy confronted him at a Roswell store. When police arrived, though, Manns claimed the deputy was threatening to beat him up. Now the Chavez County Sheriff is asking for the deputy to resign or be fired. 503 this morning, one of New Mexico's most wanted fugitives is locked up this morning. We've learned U.S. Marshals found Mario Talavera in Mexico last Friday. In 2011, he was featured on America's Most Wanted in connection with the murder, the 2008 murder of Danny Baca. Talavera and two others are accused of killing Baca over a drug deal. They allegedly shot him and left his burned body on the West Mesa. Talavera is now booked in the Otero County Jail. He is facing murder and drug trafficking charges. A group of high school students is gearing up for a pretty unique opportunity. They're going on a field trip they thought would never happen. And it may not have if it had not been for a unique idea from one of the teachers and the support of the community. News 13's Catherine Mazone is in the Newsplex with the details. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. One of the teachers at Los Puentes Charter School wanted these kids to see parts of New Mexico they've likely never experienced before. But it didn't come without a price tag. That's when he says the community stepped up to help. I think that these students need an opportunity to see things outside of Albuquerque. And all students do. That's science teacher Dave Lehman and some of his students. He often coordinates field trips at the school and says he wanted to make this trip special by taking the kids somewhere they'd likely never been before. But they needed cash. Lehman set up a GoFundMe account to start raising money. After just two months, the account had generated $1,500. Most of that came from people the students don't even know. I think it's really cool. Like, you know, that's cool of them to do that, to actually help us out, because us on our own, we wouldn't have been able to do it. It's usually like simple field trips to go to the park or something, and this one's a huge field trip. and. It sounds like a lot of fun. So what exactly does Lehman have in store for the students? I'll have that coming up in our next half hour. Back to you. All right, thanks so much, Catherine. And this morning, the students will be heading out at 630. Finalists for a one-way trip to Mars says it could be a scheme. Dr. Joseph Roque, a physics and astrophysics professor at Trinity College, is dishing on some of the potential pitfalls of the Mars One program. He says, you get points for getting through each round of the selection process, but the only way to get more points is to buy merchandise from Mars One or donate money to them. UNM grad student Zachary Gallegos was also picked as a finalist for the Mars One mission earlier this year. There will be no breaks for Rio Rancho residents when it comes to their water bills. The city pays some of the highest rates in the state, second only to Santa Fe. One city councilor wanted to freeze rates for at least a year, saying they have enough money for projects right now and need to bring a little relief to the residents there. In the end, the council voted down the proposed freeze on a vote of four to two. 
Bank of America is opening a customer service center in Rio Rancho and bringing with it 300 jobs. The jobs will be for live video tellers to help customers at the bank's new ATMs. They're looking for people who are bilingual. The bank plans to hold the job fair April 2nd at Hotel Cascada. We have posted the information on our website, krqe.com. It's now 5.06. A San Francisco woman is dead this morning, shot by plain-clothed police after they say she stole a car and went on a dangerous joyride. Yeah, police say around 7 last night, the woman drove toward officers, then hit a gas station. She then drove up one street, did a U-turn, and drove down the same road going the opposite direction of traffic. They, she clipped cars, they say, along the way. Police say they opened fire out of safety concerns. A woman died on scene. Officers are investigating whether the car was in fact stolen. And I'm sorry. You're talking to Sergeant Molina. What's I'm your sorry. record? Scary moments aboard a United Airlines flight. The plane was en route to Denver yesterday when it had to return to Washington. Police and unruly passenger rushed the cockpit, screaming jihad, jihad. Other passengers quickly subdued the man. Local law enforcement met the aircraft at the gate and detained the passenger. He was later taken to a hospital for a mental evaluation. Watch this nanny cam video shows the moment there when a boiler exploded inside a Washington state home. Last Friday, that boiler in the house since the 1960s exploded. The homeowner saw it all at work on webcam. Their baby daughter was asleep in the room or in her room. Now the family and fire officials are reminding people to have their heating and cooling appliances inspected regularly so this type of accident doesn't happen again. That is absolutely it's terrifying. I know. You always are on a little bit of an edge thinking something like this could happen in your home, but that's proof right there. Oh, yeah. Big change. In case police still don't know who fired a shot that pierced a door of an Albuquerque housing complex, killing a father. But this morning, three and a half years after his death, Andre Davis's family could be feeling some sense of justice. The family filed a civil lawsuit against Eagles Nest Condominium Complex and the property management company, saying they could have done something to stop that shooting from happening. The jury agreed and awarded the Davis estate $12 million. First and foremost, they should have been tenant screening. They allowed a person who had a, a fake name, a fake ID to be on the property. Turns out he was likely dealing drugs, got involved in an attack with another drug dealer, and there was shots fired and went through the door and killed Andre Davis. Attorneys for the Eagle's Nest and Roger Cox and Associates could not be reached. This morning, parents of some young football players are wondering who will lead their team after their coach was arrested. Coach Jason Apodaca was arrested for drugs, and now police are looking into if he brought it around the kids. Police say he would get pot and marijuana wax in the mail from his brother. They say he planned to sell it to local medical marijuana shops. He admitted he knew that's illegal. Apodaca has been arrested for drugs before. Police say there's now evidence he tried to sell drugs, or rather no evidence he tried to sell drugs to his players. For now, Yeffel tells News 13, Apodaca will never be a coach with them again. Happening today, the APS Board of Education is scheduled to look at a proposed timeline for selecting a new superintendent. Board members are searching for a replacement for former superintendent Winston Brooks. He resigned last year because of an undisclosed personnel issue. The board is expected to discuss possibly extending the deadline for applications as well as a new proposed timeline tonight at 5. The proposal calls for narrowing candidates down in April, followed by four meetings with the public, students, and staff. Right now, Brett Winter serves as interim superintendent. New this morning, video of a confrontation between a Santa Fe police officer and a driver services. It's getting a lot of attention after being posted on social media. Take a look at this. I was telling you that you violated a traffic law of not using a turning signal. I'm not versed in hand signals, sir, and I'm not going to argue with you. The video has been viewed more than 9,000 times on Facebook and YouTube. According to the Santa Fe, New Mexican, a Facebook user named Justin Digit Dean Wren posted the four-minute video earlier this month. In the video, the driver claims Officer Lori Kovach switched lanes without signaling, and that's why he motioned to her. She then pulled him over, thinking he needed help. But the only thing he wanted to tell her was she broke the law, and that's when they exchanged a few words. The Santa Fe Police Department took to social media in reaction to the video. What the department is saying coming up in our next half hour, that's at 6.01.
Times 534, the teens, two of them charged with the murders of two homeless men are making a move that could lighten their sentences if they're convicted. Police charged three young men with first degree murder. They say the trio beat two men to death using poles and cinder blocks in a dirt lot off Central. If convicted, the two minors, Nathaniel Carrillo and Gilbert Tafoya, could get life, but Carrillo's attorney has filed a motion asking for a hearing to look at the boy's maturity, brain development, past criminal record, and home life. If a judge decides they can be rehabilitated, that could mean a sentence in juvenile jail until they're 21. If those hearings are granted, they will take place after the trial, which is now scheduled for October. The third suspect, Alex Rios, was 18 at the time that crime happened. And that news comes on the same day that Albuquerque announces it's giving two and a half million dollars to help the homeless at a press conference yesterday. Mayor RJ Berry said he wants the city to be on the forefront of helping those who need food, housing or mental health services. Making Albuquerque a place that other cities are now looking to uh, to help solve issues, solve problems, meet challenges. The millions will be given to six different nonprofits. The city is working with nonprofits like St. Martin's Hospitality Center and Roadrunner Food Bank. A group of Albuquerque high schoolers can barely contain their excitement this morning. They're going on a field trip today. Yeah, but these students aren't heading to the zoo or the aquarium. They have their sights set on something much bigger, and it's mostly thanks to the community. News 13's Catherine Mazzone is in the Newsplex with more on that. Catherine? Good morning, Adam. Teachers wanted this to be a memorable trip for the students at Los Puentes Car Charter School. But with tight purse strings, they turned to the community for help. In two months, they raised $1,500. It was a phenomenal feat, and it was all primarily started from people donating who don't even know the students. Oh, I just, <laughs> I pictured a great day <laughs> because it sounds pretty cool on the field trip. Dave Lehman says he wanted these students to see parts of New Mexico they'd likely never seen before. With $1,500 from the community, Lehman arranged for a visit to the Wild Spirit Wolf Sanctuary in Rama. These are some of the animals the sanctuary brought to the state fair. But that's not all. The students will begin their day with breakfast at Denny's. And on their way to Wild Spirit, they'll stop at El Moro to tour the site and hike to the top of the ancient Pueblo. Tell me, what are you most looking forward to? Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been to Denny's before? No. Oh, That's why I'm excited. I'm interested in wolves. Like waking up early and being with my friends, going to Denny's. Oh, the wolf sanctuary. Because, like, I'm really interested in dogs. And, like, they're, I guess they're related. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's interesting, too. Now the kids tell me they'll ride in style. The funds allow them to get a coach bus for the trip. Back to you, Adam. That does sound like a lot of fun. Thanks, Catherine. And after students reached their goal of $1,500, one benefactor came forward and donated another $2,500. That will give each student $40 worth of merchandise from the Wolf Sanctuary and another $10 apiece for lunch there. So it's well-funded. Pretty Good. neat. Yeah, good opportunity. It's now 538. A dangerous letter makes it all the way to the White House undetected. We have a live look at the White House as we wake up on this Wednesday morning. A letter that arrived there on Monday has tentatively tested positive for cyanide. In a statement, a Secret Service spokesman said initial biological testing was negative. However, on Tuesday, the chemical testing returned a presumptive positive. The statement did not say if the letter was addressed to President Obama or somebody else. New and developing this morning, we're closely monitoring the results of the election in Israel. CNN reports the race for prime minister still too close to call today. Other media outlets are reporting that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has won the top race. He's already declared victory. His rival reportedly called the incumbent leader and congratulated him. Kraft Foods is recalling more than 6.5 million boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese. The company is worried some boxes may contain small pieces of metal. The recall affects only the original flavor. For a list of the products affected, go to our website, krqe.com.